on the screen is a another nano VNA uh, software package. It's called uh, VNA View, although when you download it from GitHub, it's called Nano VNA hyphen QT. Uh, the reason that I'm showing this is uh, a few uh, weeks ago, I think, at least many days ago, I did a comparison of the uh, original Nano VNA and the, and the newer uh, Nano VNA H4. And at that time, I said that I had ordered uh, an even newer device uh, called a V2 or a version 2. Now, one thing that I should point out, uh, the version 2 is not just a, an upgrade of the Nano VNA. It's a, it's a different uh, design, or, or at least significantly uh, significant enough different that, for example, the programs that run the Nano VNA don't really work with this uh, device as far as I can tell. So you do have to download the new software even if you have a working Nano VNA uh, software package on one of the earlier versions. The, uh, on the left is a Smith chart and what it's looking at is its own, uh, it's sort of contemplating its navel. It's looking at the uh, channel 1 port. In other words, this is the reflection coefficient from uh, its own channel 1 port reflected back into channel 0. If you uh, have used a vector network analyzer before, this is the S11 of the uh, of the input port of the version 2. And as you see, it's spiraling, which means that it's not a perfect match across the frequency range. On the right, you see the return loss, and notice that the return loss gets uh, up around uh, 20 dB, minus 20 dB, which is not great. Uh, and it it's, does this, uh, this kind of hopscotch pattern, and the reason for that is because the, uh, let me see if, it, if this thing will focus. Uh, what I have is that cable that you see connected between the uh, channel 0 and channel 1. In other words, uh, the output of the VNA connected back to its through input. So here is the original. Nano VNA, and what they're displayed are not the same thing, so they're completely different displays over different frequency ranges. On the right is the new V2, on the left is the original Nano VNA, and you may recall from my earlier video that what I did is a comparison of the Nano VNA H which is the original, in other words, this one, and the Nano VNA H4, which is a newer version that goes to one and a half gigahertz, and I also compared it to the Nano VNA F, which goes to one gigahertz, uh, and I don't have this one, but I do have these two, and so this original comparison is an, is an earlier uh, video on my channel. At the same time, I looked at the specs of the Nano VNA V2. Notice that the frequency range is 3 gigahertz. And it claims to have better dynamic range and a lower noise floor, uh, at least over a wider range. The, uh, the, the sweep points has now 200 points instead of 100 points, which with the wider frequency span is a good, is a good thing. Okay, what I have done is expanded the, uh, the frequency range of the Nano VNA uh, V2, and from now on I'll just call it the version 2, to its full span, 50 kilohertz at the start, 
to 3,000 megahertz or 3 gigahertz at the stop. In other words, on the left is 50 kilohertz, on the right is uh, 3 gigahertz. Now, in the center is the Smith chart, which shows that the, uh, the, the VNA is not itself a perfect match, a perfect 50 ohm match. If it were, this would just be a single dot in the center of the Smith chart. And this green trace goes with this blue uh, Smith chart that you see here. The, uh, and then there are several other channels. This is the channel you were looking at earlier that shows the uh, return loss. And uh, I think I have it on return loss. Yeah, log mag. And the in the background, you, you can probably see the purple trace. It looks blue uh, on the left here, or bluish. But this uh, sawtooth looking trace, that is the phase. And what is happening is, since the uh, cable that I have connected from channel 0 to channel 1 is several wavelengths at 3 gigahertz, it shows the phase that is changing as the frequency climbs from 50 kilohertz all the way to 3 gigahertz. Okay, what you are seeing is the uh, Nano VNA, uh, the original, the H model, looking at itself over a range of 50 kilohertz to 600 megahertz. Now, I chose 600 megahertz because I'm going to be using a, uh, a little test board that is uh, specced for that range, at least for the circuits that I'm working with. So I'm going to stay within the capabilities of both the, uh, the VNA and the test board. And what you see in the uh, yellow trace is the uh, return loss. And you see down here near 50 kilohertz, it's, the return loss is very high. There's virtually no signal being returned. But as it moves up the frequency a little bit, you see the return loss begins to, uh, to uh, diminish which causes the trace to move up. Uh, I'm not going to get into return loss, but it's it's sort of the opposite of SWR. Uh, in other words, with SWR, you want the lowest number closest, closer to 1. With return loss, you want the biggest negative number you can get, because that means that all of the power is being absorbed. And then in the center is the Smith chart showing that this device from 0 or from 50 kilohertz to 600 megahertz is pretty close to 50 ohms, right in the center. Now let's do exactly the same thing with the version 2. And now you see the V2 doing exactly the same thing. This is the return loss, the uh, yellow, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, yellow trace. And in the center of the Smith chart, the little blue circle, is the uh, reflection, is the Smith chart <laughs> of, the, uh, of the input of this V2. So in other words, it's exactly the same thing we were measuring with the Nano VNAH. Notice that the circle in the center is slightly smaller. Now, once again, we're still going over the range of 50 kilohertz to 600 megahertz. And I have calibrated this using this, uh, this board, the same as I did with the, uh, the... This board has on it a short, an open, a load, and a through. Uh, and I and I used exactly the same cables and and exactly the same short open load and through that I used to calibrate the nano VNA. So the results should be comparable. According to this, and of course you always have to take measurements of a device taken on itself with a grain of salt because after all we calibrated it to itself. But the circle on the Smith chart, to me, looks a little bit smaller on this unit. Now, what we're going to do 
is I am going to move the uh, the input to this unit over to the nano VNA H and I'll come back and explain what I've done. Okay, this is exactly the same thing. I didn't change anything. This is still scanning. All I did was I removed the cable that comes from the through there and moved it to the nano VNAH so that basically what is happening is the V2 is now looking at the input of the nano VNAH and notice that the circle is a little bit larger. So what this tells me is that the the input parameters of this uh, version 2 are slightly better. In other words, closer to 50 ohms over the frequency range 50 kilohertz to 600 megahertz, closer to 50 ohms than the original nano VNA, VNA H version. Now let's take a look at some uh, the same thing, but we're going to look at three different uh, circuits involving lumped constants, resistors, capacitors, and inductors. We're now looking at an RLC circuit, which I'll show you on here is the the number two here. It's uh, there is the diagram. Uh, notice that there is an inductor, a capacitor in series, and then across the series combination is a resistor. And uh, this is from 50 kilohertz to 600 megahertz, RLC series parallel circuit, and we get that circle. And as you see on here, the Smith chart, and once again, same thing, the return loss is the uh, yellow trace and the blue circle is the Smith chart, or S11. Now, what I'm going to do is do exactly the same thing, move this one out of the way, move the nano VNA over here, hook it up to exactly the same circuit, and you see we get almost exactly the same thing showing that over this frequency range the two circuits appear, the two uh, VNAs appear to provide very very close results. Now understand here we're only doing an S11 measurement so we're only using channel 0. Earlier I was looking at the differences between channel 1 of the two units and discovered that the uh, VNAH is a little further off from true 50 ohm than the the version 2. The version 2 has a slightly better input circuit, but we're not using the inputs here. This is not a through. This is just a reflection. Now we're going to move to a second circuit, and this circuit is what is here called circuit number 1, and notice this is the uh, the Smith chart. This is the circuit. It's a capacitor connected to one terminal and then an inductor and a resistor in parallel connected to the other terminal. And uh, we are looking now by the other terminal, one of these is ground and one of these is the input. So in other words, we're just looking across this network. And this is the, uh, the Smith chart. And as you see, that's exactly what we get. Now, let's go over and look at this unit connected to exactly the same circuit and there you see we get exactly the same result and at the uh, 600 megahertz point it it becomes uh, essentially a 50 ohm uh, circuit. Now let's look at the third uh, circuit and then we'll close this video out. Okay, this circuit that we are looking at now is an LC series circuit. Notice that the uh, what we have is a capacitor and an inductor. Uh, 
that's on the V2. Now let's switch to uh, the Nano VNA uh, H and there you see basically over this limited frequency range the uh, the version 2 and the Nano VNA H appear to be about the same. This unit I got through, through Newegg it's available in lots of different places. It's just called the Nano VNA V2. I ordered this from Newegg on the 16th of June. I got it on the 10th of July. That's 24 days. I paid $72. But one reason that, and, and you can get it for down a little, just under 60 if, I, if my, uh, my trolling the web uh, is any indication. But one of the differences is this one came with a battery, and you may be able to see it. There it is. This is the battery. I'm anxious now to start using this unit up in its higher frequency range. And at that point, what I may do is compare it to the VNA Tiny, which is a much more expensive 3 gigahertz VNA that runs $500 or, or so. Uh, that I have shown in some previous videos. But for now, I think that's enough uh, comparison between the version 2 and the original Nano VNA H to give you an idea of whether you might want to, uh, to buy one. I will say that I, I do plan to do some more experiments, particularly with the V2. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let's call it uh, <laughs> quits for the, for the time being. And I hope you go on to have a very nice day.